Buonasera a tutti, benvenuti in questa specialissima puntata del Salotto di Mitch. Avremo un altro ospite incredibile eh, qui con noi stasera. Saluto tutti i collegati e vado ad invitarlo. Saluto a Bo Prandin che vedo collegato con noi, grande Bob, ormai che ti sei lanciato con Instagram stai dominando, eh? ti vedo che sei, sei infuocato. Qualche secondo, vediamo se riusciamo a... a trovarlo. Saluto tutti intanto, come sempre, sì esatto, Mauro Brugnara dice è la, è la fine con Bobo su Instagram, avete ragione, qui però come sempre non si riesce a, a partire, eccolo qua, l'abbiamo trovato. <ride> Gare, Ciao Mike. Ciao, come stai? Bene, tu? Bene, bene, grazie. So, it's a, it's a pleasure having, uh, having you here with us. Everybody is very excited in Verona, so, you know, let's, let's make it fun for everybody. For sure, I'm really happy, really happy to be here, and I think it's a, a great show you guys are doing to keep people entertained during these very difficult times. Thank you. So, how's the situation uh, there in the United States? Um, I think it's very similar to, uh, to Italy right now, but it depends on where, where you are in the U.S. Um, if you're up in New York and New Jersey, it's, it's a complete lockdown uh, okay. because the situation is very, very, um, very dire up there right now. Um, a lot of new cases every day, a lot of people dying. Um, but as you move out towards the West, uh, areas like Colorado and New Mexico, They haven't been hit as hard, so they're not as, as you know, not on, on lockdown as much. Okay, okay. Because, uh, you know, there's, no, there's not um, a real, uh, you know, news here. You know, we don't know exactly what's going on in other countries because we are very, we are very concerned uh, about what, what is happening here. So, you know, that's why I always ask if I, if I talk to somebody uh, abroad. So... Yeah, yeah. Very similar, but like I said, very similar. And, you know, the government is telling everybody the same thing. Stay inside, stay away from people, social distancing. Do what you can do to help this, uh, this epidemic, this virus to stop from spreading. And I know it's difficult on a lot of people because most of us want to be outside doing things. Yeah. Most of us want to be playing basketball right now or coaching basketball. Um, but you have to do what's best for everybody and that's stay inside and stay away from each other. Yeah. So uh, Mauro Brugnare is saying hi to you. <laughs> hi, Mauro. Great, and, great know, guy, yeah. Huh? Great guy. And, you know, I've been following, I always follow the team. You guys are having a great season over there. Um, you know, I know you went through some changes with the coach and everything, but like it seemed like the last couple of weeks, the team was playing at a really, really high level. Um, so I'm sure it's really disappointing. It's very similar to our situation because we were fortunate um, on Tuesday night before everything shut down on Thursday, we mm -hmm. won our conference championship and received okay. a bid to go to the NCAA tournament. Oh, and wow. we were all, yeah, we were all excited about that. And two days later, they shut it all down. So, um, you know, I know how everybody's feeling. and I know how important basketball is uh Verona and to the people and I'm sure it's very difficult for them right now yeah I mean uh for us was uh, uh we I think we found our group you know in the last two months so it was uh it was very disappointing to stop but you know the situation uh became you know too hard to face and we couldn't play with fans 
so you know the last games that were played in our league was without were without fans and I mean it's pointless so uh, they had to stop everything but were you playing were you, were you guys playing with fans in the US uh, when uh, you yeah. Out? yeah the last game our last game was uh, we have a brand new it's incredible we have a brand new 51 million dollar arena that we just built on our board. and um, you know, you know uh, we have 4,500 people in the last game, and this place was sold out. Um, and it was a great environment. Um, you know, but unfortunately, you know, after the game was over, like I said, we couldn't go. But uh, two days later, they announced that one of the referees of our game had tested positive for coronavirus. Uh -huh. So everybody that played in that game was very nervous. Um, you know, we, were, we weren't so, quote, unquote, quarantined, but we were all told if we have any symptoms to get to the hospital immediately. Uh, because we were in direct contact, you know, you shake hands with the officials, you talk to them, all yeah. those things. But fortunately, nobody that was at that game, that played in the game or coached in the game, was affected by it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's because uh, we 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 don't exactly know uh, how it goes, how this virus goes around. Because today, you know, I was reading articles. You know, it stays in the air a little bit. So they're uh, talking about you know wearing uh, face masks and. Uh, and everything. So I think they're finding out, they're discovering stuff about the virus, you know, uh, every day, something new every day. Uh, yeah, so. no doubt. I think that, you know, the people that are working on it are some of the best in the best in the world. Um, yeah. Even today here in Pittsburgh at the University of Pittsburgh, they, they found that they think uh, close to a vaccine for it. Oh, wow. So, um, they talked about that. It's actually not even a shot. It's like a little patch you put on you. And, uh, so, like, gives a little bit of a bunch of needles into your skin and then secretes some kind of proteins or something that helps, like, create antibodies for it. Uh, so, every day they're coming out with new things. And in, I'm sure it's like everybody over there, too. You're just hoping for good news every day. You wake up. Yeah. You're going, you know, you yeah. go to bed with disappointing news and you wake up saying, come on, baby, today's got to be the yeah. day to go right. Um, yeah. You know, and that's all you can do. Hold out hope and and pray and, and, and hopefully things work out. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very trying time, but you gotta have hope. Hey, I wanna, uh, I wanna ask you something. I wanna ask you a lot of things, but the first things, uh, thing I wanna ask you is, uh, about your, um, Jersey retirement ceremony you had in Verona, uh, three years ago, if I'm right. Correct. Yes. And I saw, I saw the video and I saw you were emotional. Uh, what did you, what did you feel? Know, what, what were the feelings yeah yeah well first when when I came over I didn't have I didn't have any idea how big it was going to be um, the job that uh, on Andrea Sordelli and many of the people that worked uh, with the Verona organization they put on a three-day or four-day event that was incredible like it just blew, blew me and my family away didn't think it was going to be that big um, but how they did it and how they presented it um, the whole the whole environment was very emotional for me because, you know, I've always said that Verona is like my second home. Um, I always had, it was a place I played basketball, but it was a place where I met a lot of good people and, and made a lot of good friends that I think for a lifetime. To me, that's way more important than basketball. Um, so when I came yeah. back over there and a lot of those people that were kids when I was playing uh, and I hoped it helped influence in the basketball were now grown adults and had families of their own. Uh, it just was really great to, to be able to experience that. And, you know, to have your number retired is a great honor, but it was way, way bigger than that for me and my family. Um, and it was just in a great event that I was very humbled about the whole experience. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, I feel, I feel the same thing when, uh, when we are talking about Verona as, you know, as a whole, as a city, as a basketball team, uh, the passion uh, the people from Verona put, uh, you know, towards the basketball team makes you feel at home. So, you know, I, I, I played a lot, of, uh, a lot of years and I went around Italy a lot, but, you know, Verona feels, felt like home uh, right away. So it's, uh, when, I read the, when I read your interview, I felt a lot of uh, things in common. So that's yes. why I wanted to ask you. 
and it's all about the people there. It really is, you know what I mean? And it's just about the, the great people of Verona and, uh, you know, how they treat their players. But, but they treat you more like family than a basketball player. I mean, yeah. I was probably over more people's homes to dinner than I've ever been in my life just because yeah. they like family. Yeah. And uh, another thing I, want, uh, I wanted to ask is um, where did you go around when you were playing uh, in Verona? What, what did you like the most? Um. You know, I think that there was a couple of things. Like, do you mean more for the city or just around? Yeah, the city, yeah. you know, because sometimes I walk around, you know, when I have my day off, I walk around the city. I have my places, you know. I like to walk around. Or I like to see some places when I win, when I lose, you know, do something. Yeah, so, yeah. I used to sit on the uh, couple of things. Number one, I used to sit on the bridge there um, right by the uh, Castle Vecchio and sit okay. on the river and just hang out there for a little bit. <laughs> Uh, that was one of the spots I like to hang out. But I, I, I like people, so I used to go down to Piazza Bra, Piazza Herbe. That was yeah. my spot. Um, go down there and have a, a little wine with the, the the sparkling something in it. I don't know. Raleigh used to take me down to this little bar in Piazza Herbe, and they had a wine with a little sparkle, and it was good. <laughs> so you know, I, I I enjoyed spending time and just walking down Via Messini and all those places. For me, that was that was the most enjoyable. Let me, translate, let me translate this a little bit. Sure. Ho chiesto cosa pensava della cerimonia di ritiro della maglia e ha detto che era più grande della pallacanestro perché Verona è una città che l'ha accolto come, come una famiglia, lui si è sentito come a casa e quindi è stato incredibile l'evento che Andrea Sordelli e eh, tutte le altre persone hanno organizzato per lui. E poi gli ho chiesto dove gli piaceva girare, andare eh, nel suo tempo libero a Verona e gli piaceva il ponte di vicino a Castelvecchio e Piazza Erbe, Piazza Bra, insomma gli piace stare tra le persone, quindi questi erano i suoi posti. I, uh, I read uh, in, in the interview uh, you had when you came here for, uh, for the ceremony, I read, I read something about uh, the difference between the players now and the players, uh, you know, back in the days where you were playing. Uh, can you tell me more about it? Um, yeah, I think, you know, obviously things have changed. The game of basketball continues to evolve um, how it's being played. And, you know, especially like how guys are training nowadays, um, you know, whether they're weightlifting more or doing more nutrition, all that stuff. The game has really evolved. I think players, players are probably still the same, but there's just so much better athletes and, uh, you know, incredible with, with the things that they can do nowadays. Um, you know, I think one of the differences like between the United States and, and Europe is the fact that I still believe that the European players um, have an incredible amount of skill. Um, that the, because they, from, from young ages, they're doing a lot of fundamental uh, workouts where we're playing a lot of AAU basketball. Um, yeah. Not spending more time, but in the end, I think that the game has gotten better and better, and people involved in it are really trying to, um, you know, trying to make it a game that is enjoyable for everybody to watch. Yeah, and I think that's the most important thing. What about um, what about the like the mental approach or the or the or the work ethic? Is it different? Uh, uh, do you think that there's a difference now between what young guys do and what uh, you know you used to do? And unfortunately, me too. <laughs> I was doing. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think one of the difference. The only thing I see that's different is you know I think sometimes players because we live in a social media world, everything mm -hmm. is instant instant gratification right now. Um, and you know as well as I do, to become a really good shooter, you have to spend years and hours and days in the gym, day after day after day after day, to become a good shooter. It takes a long time. Now I think sometimes guys go in the gym and they shoot a couple times and they think they're going to be good shooters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the other thing sometimes I think is sometimes in the, that we live in this social media world. I don't think the players have changed. I think the perception has changed because you can have a guy put stuff on Instagram that isn't true or on Twitter that isn't true. And everybody yeah. thinks, oh, this is the hardest working guy in the world. And it's a guy who's never in the gym, but he can portray that image. I call it the Kardashian image. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, yeah. yeah, but there's still guys out there, I think, that, that love the game, that respect the game, 
that want to spend the time necessary to learn and want to be coached and want to be good. So I don't think that's ever changed. You just have to find the right guys. Yeah. What about, uh, what about coaching? Uh, what do you bring to the coaching job? You know, uh, you, you, you were a player, so do you bring, do you bring something that you had as, uh, as a player uh, in your coaching job or is it completely different? No, I definitely do. I, I bring the same passion, the same fight, the same intensity. I'm a very intense person um, and I bring that to the court every single day. Um, I tell the guys, I'm not going to coach your effort. Like, yeah. You have to bring that effort. And if you don't, I'm going to be a nasty son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, and that's how I do it. But I also, as a player, I also understand that the mental and the physical aspects that players go through. When they're yeah. fatigued, when they need to be picked up, um, when they need more positive reinforcement than negative reinforcement. You know, I think that I have a good feel of, of that with players because – I'm a big believer in connecting with them as people first. Yeah. That's the one thing that I really learned as coach, the coach. If you can connect to players as and care about them as people first, they'll do a lot for you as a player. Because as yeah. a coach, you know, you ask a lot of of uh of players and you ask a lot of them and it's hard on them, but like if, if they know you care about them, you've got a better chance. Yeah, then I think they give you everything. Yeah, if For the sure. relationship is a, is a good relationship that they give you, they give you everything. Yeah. They one, say, question, one question on my side, how are, how are things in Verona? How are the people in Verona? Like, cause that's a big concern of mine because like, you know, I see the pictures of the empty streets and all that and it breaks my heart. So, you know, how are the people there? I was, I was in Verona until uh, two weeks ago. Now I'm back in, uh, in the place where I live. I live in Faenza, you know, Imola, did you play there? Yep, yep. Okay, so it's close to Imola. I was there until two weeks ago and, uh, you know, it was a complete lockdown. So, you know, it's, uh, it was, we, we couldn't go, uh, get out of our houses, just uh, grocery stores and, uh, and pharmacies. But, you know, I think the, the re uh, Veneto as a region, they did a very good job, you know, uh, containing the virus. Uh, so, you know, yeah, we got to be patient. Everybody's got to be patient. You know, it's going to be still a long path, I think. Uh, so they postponed the day of the quarantine. Uh, it, uh, it was uh, the first date was, I think, April 3rd. And now is uh, April uh, 13th. And so let's see, let's see how it goes from, uh, from that date on, you know, we don't know, but you know, numbers, numbers, the last few days were getting better. So I don't know about today because I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you right now. And usually, you know, at this time, uh, they give the numbers, you know, the daily numbers of the virus infected, the uh, death, deaths and, you know, everything else. So, but the last few days they were good. So we have to be patient, but you know, I know people in Verona are strong, so. We're going to get through this. Good. Great to hear. And uh, what else? What else? Uh, oh, okay. So I talked yesterday, I talked to uh, the doctor, Paolo Canas. <laughs> My guy. Okay. Because I, I think we share, we share a, a little bit uh, of something in common. He told me that you, you wanted shots in your foot to practice. Yes. Is Correct. that right? Correct. So last year, uh, before the playoffs, uh, last game before the playoffs, I sprained my ankle and I had to go uh, to play all the playoffs with these shots, you know, and he was, he was making the shots right before the game. Yeah. A, a couple of times, you know, I couldn't feel my foot for the, like the first quarter. So when, yesterday, when he told me yesterday, I was laughing because yeah. I thought about you doing that just for practice. And I can understand your passion. <laughs> for, for, for number one, let's, let, let me say this. Paolo Carnes is one of the best doctors in the world. And the reason why, he cares so much about the players and the people yeah. and will do anything in the world to help him. Um, you know, he's always been a good friend and I love the guy to death. Uh, him and Enrico. I don't know if Enrico's still with the team. Yeah, but, he's, he's, he's still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great yeah, guy they, too. They both are my guys right there. And, uh, you know, you know as well as I do, as you get a little older, the body doesn't always respond how you want it to. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you need a little help. And um, yeah. Paolo was always there and 
you know, we were very fortunate at the time. We had um, we had a great trainer in Luca Fazzoli, and then Raleigh was there too, who really helped everybody uh, get through all the things that they needed to do. I always felt like I had the best medical care in the world when I was ever on. So I'm going to translate this because this is funny. <laughs> ieri, ieri ho parlato con col dottore, con Paolo Cannas, e mi ha detto che Mike voleva fare le infiltrazioni al piede per fare allenamento. Allora mi ha detto, chiedigli com'era questa cosa qua, visto che tu l'anno scorso, tu io, l'anno scorso eh, facevo le infiltrazioni prima delle partite e stavamo dicendo che appunto eh, il Doc è bravissimo a, a cercare di, metterci, di mettere i giocatori nelle condizioni di giocare perché è uno che ha veramente cura di, dei giocatori che ha, gli vuole bene, sia lui che Enrico Vittone, quindi li ringraziamo sempre, è sempre bello a distanza di anni vedere che, che succedono le stesse cose. So let me see what else. The, oh, okay. I wanted to ask you this, uh, this, this thing about the NBA. How did the NBA change uh, between, you know, like uh, your, your era when you were there and now? Because you, I mean, I think you are, you're a player that, you know, played like the game is played now. Because I was, I was very young when you were playing, but I remember the games on, uh, on the TV. And I remember you shooting long range three pointers, you know, your floater, your typical floater. And now it's, it's the game. It's the game that is played now. So you played, you played the game that is played now about 20 years ago. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, this is impressive to me. You know, it's, it's something that you, as, if you see games, if you watch games, you notice right away. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I, I think, uh, You know, like I said, the game is always evolving. I think uh, one of the things when I played, there was less team. Um, so, and the game was a lot more physical than it was, uh, than it is today. You know what I mean? Like you were allowed to hand check, you were allowed to grab, you know, mm -hmm. a hard foul was just two shots and play on. <laughs> you, yeah. know, uh, you know, you, you had, you know, back in the day, you had to be a tough, tough, tough guy to play the game. Um, You know, but I think uh, today it's evolved into more of an offensive game, obviously, because that's the entertainment value of it. Yeah, okay. You know, I think people still still want to see games that are in the, uh, you know, the hundreds and 120s and the Houston Rockets playing, you know, where they score and shoot lots of threes um, and all those things. But, you know, I just think, I think basketball in its truest sense still goes back to this shooting, passing, and dribbling. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if you can do those three things at a high level, you can play in a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what right. I like about that's what I liked about European basketball. You know, it was one of those things where, okay, you know, I wasn't the most athletic guy in the world. I never dunked a basketball in my life. Uh, and everybody jokes about that. You can't ever dunk, you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> Everybody jokes about that, but you know, I spent a lot of time on working on my ball handling, a lot of time on my shooting, and it served me really well for a long period of time. Yeah, I mean, you were you were getting buckets, so I, I think you were. <laughs> <laughs> we needed to. Fadini, Fadini, Andrea Fadini, he paid me to, to score a lot of baskets. He said, if you don't score a lot of baskets, I'm not paying you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know Andrea, I know Andrea very well, so I, I, I think he said it, <laughs> said it for real. You know, it's Andrea yeah, is yeah. a very straight guy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, and you know, it's incredible because. You know, when I was playing, uh, Giuseppe Vicenzi and Mara Vicenzi owned the team, and they were such fantastic owners. Um, they were so incredible, great owners there. And then now the Pedrola family. I mean, when I got the chance to meet Giorgio and his father, uh, when I came for the ceremony, like, you just felt like the passing over to their ownership was like, yes, this is what Verona's about, you know, from Vicenzi to Padrola. People care about the team. People care about the society. Like, you know, you know, you just, this is the right spot, Verona, you know, those, having those people around. Yeah. Can you tell me something about uh, the Courage Cup, the game in uh, Belgrade? And how was, uh, how, how was it to come back at the airport in Verona? There were people waiting for you guys? There was. That was an incredible experience because I'll tell you why. You know, we lost the game at home uh, yeah. by six points. And I'll never forget when we get to Red Star Belgrade, we go out in the court. There's probably 9,000 people there. The place is packed. 
and the song they were playing when we came out was We Are the Champions. So like, okay. I don't know if they thought they were already gonna win the thing or not, but I was like, no, this isn't happening tonight. And uh, we played an incredible game. Uh, Roberto Della Vecchia was amazing making three point shots. Um, you know, Randolph Keys played really good. We had a lot of contributions from a lot of different people that game. Sandra Boney was such a such a great factor because he would had a lot of European experience before. Um, to win that game there was just an incredible experience. And, you know, Andrea Mazzone did an unbelievable job uh, coaching and, uh, you know, just an incredible experience. Alessandro Giuliani was there. So, like, a lot of people – contributed but it was great because when we got back the people of Verona were just so excited to win a championship um, it had been a long time that they had and the first European championship they won it was just a great experience that's something that they still talk about today and that's still something yeah. that I, I carry around with me saying hey I won a Courage Cup because you know a lot of people play for a, do a lot of different reasons I always said I played for one reason. I love to win basketball games, and I love to win championships. And, uh, you know, some people say, oh, you know, you should play for the spirit of all this. No, I play to win championships. That's why I played. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Competitive me, nature. Yeah, for me to help bring a championship to Verona was like me giving back to them what they deserve. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that must have been a great, a great feeling. And it, I, everybody's talking about this uh, still today, so it's uh, yeah. something amazing, amazing. Yeah, for sure, for sure, it was great for the city, and you know, hopefully, when you guys get back playing, you'll win another championship. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully. Yes, hopefully. sir. I think I, I think we were on the on the right path. You know, the last, as I told you, the last few months we were we were playing better. We we had chances for sure. But now, you know, it's, there's something more important. And so it's, uh, it's, even, it's even hard for me to talk about basketball um, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, playing a game uh, this, this season because, you know, there are people dying. So it's, it's very hard, you know, to, to think yeah. about practicing and playing basketball. Correct. But how, yeah. many year, how many years do you think you have left to play? Uh, I hope I have four or five. I'm 32 okay. now. So, you Good. know, I hope I have four or five. I, yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a, a major injury in, uh, back in December, but you know, with uh, with Doc and um, Gianpaolo Cao, the osteopath, we yeah. we did a great job. So I was uh, I was back in uh, I had to uh, be out for like four months, and I was back in 50 days, ready to play. <laughs> but then you know the virus uh, came out, so you know I couldn't play anymore. Right. So right. I'm waiting. Well, just enjoy it because you know it's funny how. You know, you always talk about how it's hard and all this and that, but like in the end, you look back and you're like, wow, that really went quick. Uh, yeah. So, you know, one of the things, and then maybe this is one of the things with this virus and everything, helps you to appreciate every single day that you get the opportunity to do something you love to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the, the, uh, the, the thing I'm experiencing the most right now. Uh, you go, you go to work, you go, I mean, we don't, we go to work, but we are very lucky. Uh, and the thing that uh, is bothering me the most is uh, I, I can't do my job these days. Correct. And I'm missing it more than I thought it was possible. So, yeah, what you were saying, I think, is, uh, is, uh, is the point right now. Yeah, appreciate it all, because before you look, know it, it'll be over. <laughs> or it could be taken away from you at any given point through through an injury or through a virus like you never know the day when it could all end so appreciate yeah. every day of it there's a there's a there's something i read uh, in the same interview i was uh, uh, talking to you about before and you said you were uh, an ordinary an ordinary person uh, doing uh, an extraordinary job that i think that that's the essence of you know of everything because, you know, sometimes people think when they, when they do sports, sometimes people think they are, uh, you know, larger than life. But it's not them. It's the job that makes them like that. And the people around them make them like that. Correct. And, you know, and I think that's, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, the people of Rona always took to me. Because I never thought, like, I was bigger than anybody else. 
I just tried to fit in with everybody, enjoy the experience and make friends and make lasting relationships. And uh, yeah, basketball is a job. It's just a job that we do. It's a job that we love to do, but it doesn't make us any better than any person on this earth because we play basketball. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it does. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, people are people. And, um, you know, and again, basketball is a very short period. I've been fortunate that I've played a long time and now I've coached for 15 years. It's been my whole life, basically. Um, but I always say um, basketball is the job that I do. It's not who I am as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, I want to thank you uh, for uh, being with me. It was a great pleasure. I was a kid when you were playing, so it was, uh, <laughs> it was for me, for me, it was, uh, I was a little bit, you know, excited, emotional to have you. I hope all went well, and, uh, and thank you. If your family is there, they are asking me if, uh, if they can say hi to everybody. Are you with your family? Uh, me, hold on one second. I'll see if they're here. Hold on one second. I know Olivia was here. Olivia, the people in Verona want to say hi to you. Hold on. Say hi to the people in Verona, Liv. Hello. That's my daughter, Olivia. Ciao. Hi. Uh, my, my son is out. He, he's out uh, doing something in the outside. So, uh, okay. but, uh, yeah. But everybody's doing very well here and everything. So, um, you know, we just keep praying for everybody there and everybody around the world. And hopefully, hopefully we're going to get through this sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah. But Thank I you again, Mike. Me on. This has been a lot of fun. We should do it again sometime. Okay. Uh, we, we will. We will. Uh, ciao. We've done it. Have a nice day. Ciao. You too. Ciao. Allora, se avete un po' di pazienza, vi traduco un po' di cose che vi ho chiesto. Eh, abbiamo parlato del, dell'NBA oggi e dell'NBA com'era. E mi ha detto che la differenza, diciamo, basilare tra l'NBA oggi e l'NBA com'era era la, la fisicità. Eh, il gioco era molto più duro, c'erano più falli eh, duri, si andava avanti con più, mh, eh, con più naturalezza, oggi è più un entertainment, eh, che però alla fine l'essenza della pallacanestro è sempre quella di saper giocare a basket, quindi di conoscere i fondamentali ed è per quello che lui ama il basket europeo. Eh, si è preoccupato di come stanno le persone a Verona, mi ha chiesto come stava andando a Verona la situazione del, eh, del virus e tutto. E quindi eh, è una persona che è veramente rimasta tanto attaccata a, a qui. E il ricordo della Coppa Cora c'è una cosa che lui porta dentro di sé è indelebile, ma ha raccontato del ritorno all'aeroporto che è stato incredibile e gli ho detto che ancora se ne parla oggi e lui ancora va in giro a dire che ha vinto una Coppa Cora e quindi è eh, veramente una cosa speciale, un legame speciale. Vi ringrazio di essere stati con me anche oggi. Non so se e chi ci porterà il prossimo salotto di Mitch. Mi raccomando, continuate a stare a casa. Vi abbraccio tutti. Fate una buona serata. Mauro, adesso puoi chiudere. Sì, ti do il permesso. Adesso fatta anche questa, siamo a posto. Ciao a tutti, buona serata.